My husband forced me to take a paternity test. The results ended up being something no one expected. I, 27F, have been married to my husband, 28M, for two years and gave birth to our daughter five weeks ago. I'll try to keep this short so I don't waste your time with any irrelevant details. What happened was that our daughter came out with blonde hair and pale blue eyes, while my husband and I have brown hair and brown eyes. My husband freaked out at this and refused to listen to my explanation that sometimes babies are born with lighter hair and eyes that get darker over time. He demanded a paternity test and threatened to divorce me if I didn't comply, so I did. After my daughter and I got home from the hospital, my husband went to stay at his parents' house for the first three weeks to get some space from me while I recovered, and he told them what was happening. My mother-in-law called and informed me that if the paternity test revealed that the child wasn't his, she would do anything within her power to make sure that I was taken to the cleaners during the divorce. I had my sister to lean on and help me take care of the baby during this. We got the results back yesterday, and my husband came home to view them with me. I was on the couch in the living room, so he sat next to me, and we started to read the results. They showed that he was the father, and my husband had this shocked, kind of mortified look on his face with his eyes wide as he stared at it. I couldn't help but say, I told you so, and started laughing at the way he looked. My husband snapped out of his shock and got mad at me for laughing at him. We argued for a bit, which was mainly him yelling at me, before my sister came downstairs and my husband shut up. After that, my husband went back to his parents' house to clear his head, and two to three hours later, my mother-in-law called to scold me about laughing in my husband's face because apparently it was kicking him while he was down. She's also left a couple of nasty text messages essentially saying the same thing this morning. I don't think I'm an a-hole, but I'd like some outsider perspective on this. Edit. I would also like to add, I have zero history of cheating. Now here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, I am curious though why you would want to stay with someone who is that clueless about genetics and who has a clearly toxic mother? I did not realize he would refuse to listen to basic facts about biology when I married him. Then user 2 said, So he was down by finding out that he was mistaken and you didn't actually get pregnant with someone else's child? Tough luck fella. He owes you a massive apology. Or three. Sorry about your husband and in-laws. And finally, user three said, this is insane. He abandoned you postpartum and forced you to take care of a newborn by yourself while healing. My husband and I also have a baby that looks nothing like either of ours. She came out with strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes, while we both have brown hair and brown eyes. We both just said, wow, genetics are crazy and moved on. I'm so sorry for what you're going through while being freshly postpartum with a newborn. Update, two months later. I'll start this post off by saying thank you for all the advice and support I was given. You all gave me the firm kick in the ass to divorce my ex. All right, so here's the update. After making my post, I decided to search for divorce lawyers in my area with my sister. It took a while, but I managed to find and meet with one who was willing to do virtual consultations. During this, my ex was not contacting me at all, but I did reach out to see if he was okay. Eventually, once he actually got served, my ex came back to our house and tried pleading with me not to go through with the divorce. He said he loved me more than anyone and that we could go to couples therapy. During this, my ex slipped up and admitted to cheating on me when he first left me. He said that he got caught up with his co-worker when trying to explain his weeks-long absence. At first, I didn't realize who he was talking about because he referred to her by a nickname, think Viv or Vivian, but my brain kicked back into gear and asked if that getting caught up with her was code for that he screwed her. My ex stumbled over his words and tried to dodge the question, but he seemed to realize that I wasn't going to let up on this pretty quickly. He admitted to going to her for emotional support before our baby was born, since he was nervous about being a dad and eventually sleeping with her during the time he left. So, you guys were right about him cheating. I had heard enough at this point and told my ex point blank we were going to divorce, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, and that I wanted 50-50 custody. We would only be speaking about the divorce, custody arrangements, and our daughter herself after this. My ex just nodded to what I was saying and asked if he could see our daughter. I was a bit hesitant but said yes and called my sister to have her bring our daughter down to the living room. My ex held our daughter and talked to the baby for a bit before leaving. My sister asked me if I was alright 
after he was gone, and I told her I was okay. My mother-in-law did try to harass me over the phone about divorcing my ex, but by then, I had already blocked her, so she went to my sister instead. I guess my mother-in-law was never told that I owned the house my ex and I previously shared since she texted my sister, saying that I was going to be on the streets. Well, my mother-in-law most certainly knows that now, since my ex is now living with her and moved out. My ex has seen our daughter a few times. Those visits were awkward to say the least, but I managed. Hopefully, I won't have to give you guys any more updates about this. Now here are some more relevant comments. User1 said, I wonder if her being willing to make a child homeless plays any role, or is OP just stuck? I think she assumed that if I got kicked out, my daughter would be stuck with my ex, rather than me taking my daughter with me and staying at my parents' house. Then user2 said, so he wrongly accused you of cheating, then turns around and cheats on you? Thank goodness you're divorcing him and leaving him and his mother behind. Best of luck to you and your daughter. Then user 3 said, right of first refusal or assuring priority of potential care. This refers to situations where a parent is unable to meet an obligation for the care of the child during their scheduled time. They must then contact the other parent to offer them to have the child before they use another family member or babysitter over the other parent. So, if your ex has the baby but just drops her off at his mother's house and takes off, you can take your child back home with you, or eventually get more custody time if he is not using his custody time to be with his child. And finally, user 4 commented, I don't think 50-50 custody is the right thing here. He has no parental instincts for his child at all, even denying he was the father. Up to this point, it sounds like he hasn't even fed or changed a diaper. You shouldn't turn her over to him half the time. He'll probably just hand her off to the mother-in-law to raise. You should be going for full custody based on him abandoning you and your daughter after the birth, as well as refusing to believe he was the father. He should pay child support and not corrupt his daughter further. So believe it or not, the thing about babies' appearances changing shortly after their births, I only learned that this week, and now I'm reading a story about it. But it seems like the husband just plugged his fingers in his ears and said, la la la, I can't hear you, because he didn't listen to his wife at all. He didn't want to hear her explanations. He didn't want to research it. He didn't want to ask anybody about it. He's just like, oh, she's cheating. Then he runs off to mom because he's a mama's boy, and then, you know, mom said some nasty things. Well, get her out of here. We don't need her. And I hope OP gets primary custody because like that last comment said, it doesn't even sound like this dude has like fed her or changed a diaper yet because he keeps leaving to go cheat or complain to mom or go cry about, you know, being an idiot. <laughs> but anyway, next story. Story number two. My 27F boyfriend 24M blocked me for renewing my lease. What can I do to make things up to him? I am hurt and betrayed. My boyfriend is a great person and we've been together for three years. My boyfriend is very frugal and I am too. He graduated with a degree in computer science and has been making decent money since he graduated. When he graduated, he used the FHA loan for a humble but small townhome. I am someone who differs in that I like the luxury. Last year, I got a nice high-rise apartment in a major metropolitan area and signed a 14-month lease. With that, my rent was $4,100 a month. Eventually, with other bills, I was not able to afford it. My boyfriend's mortgage is really cheap because his place is extremely cheap. Mind you, his townhouse is only a two-bedroom. My apartment is only a one-bedroom, but that's what you expect. You're paying for the view. It's near the top, the concierge, and the luxury experience. My boyfriend and I had a talk because I needed his help. He would cover half my rent, and then I would either move in with him or get a cheaper apartment. I could even stay in the same apartment and switch to one of the cheaper ones. I would have tried to move in with him, but not at his place. He agreed that he could move, but we still couldn't find a place that works for both of us because he's so cheap. Anyway, I realized him and I will be getting married soon, so it's better to renew my lease and enjoy the high-rise nice luxury for one more year. I was dreading on telling him, but last night I did, and he was pissed. He said, so you just expect me to pay half your rent again? I told him, well, obviously. Then he said, have you considered I like nice things too? But it's hard to do that when I'm sending you $2,500 a month. I would work with you if you were just as bad at managing personal finances and try to teach you. Then he told me it's worse than that and that I'm just selfish and trying to take advantage of him. I was angry at him, accusing me of just trying to take advantage of him. That's not true at freaking all. I love him, and the fact that he said that hurt. He just hung up and blocked me everywhere. I'm going to head to his townhouse today so we can talk about this. Any suggestions? 
edit. I'm taking accountability and I'm going to cancel the lease. Then in the comments section, users unanimously agree that OP sounds delusional with her demands from her boyfriend. Everyone thinks that OP's boyfriend should break up with her for her selfishness. Then in the comments section, OP is disinclined to agree and seems desperate to save her relationship. She thinks she had the right to ask for what she did, but when the comments don't go her way, she wants to save the relationship and agree to her boyfriend's terms and cancels the lease. Edit. I was wrong and that's why I take full accountability. Him blocking me doesn't help us get to any real solutions. I'm going over to his place today so we can have a real conversation. I was looking for advice on how to approach this conversation. I think I will address him blocking me at a later date and just focus on apologizing for renewing my lease without telling him. Update. Thank you for the few encouraging comments. We are still together. We had a very long talk yesterday. He feels very betrayed and said this was a huge setback. He said, one, I'm financially irresponsible because I make too much money right now and I need to be financed. Two, he thinks I've been using him. That still hurts. I told him I haven't and I love him and I've had opportunities to date men that make more money than him, but I want him. And then he laid out some conditions. One, therapy, which I thought was an odd request, but I agreed to it, both individual and together. And two, I speak to a financial planner and follow their budget. He said they do that for free. He said I need to show him I want him for more than his money because he seriously is doubting that and that he's not sponsoring me anymore. So I feel like a lot of people would just be like, break up with her, get rid of her. But it seems like he's like right at that breaking point. I can't believe he included therapy in there. I'm so happy for that because she could probably use that and a financial planner. But I see where the boyfriend's coming from. He is like mostly out the door, but he's like, hey, if you do this and that and try to improve yourself and actually can show me that you have good intentions, then I will moonwalk back into the living room and then make love to you, darling angel. But if not, then I will do a somersault out the window and you can pay for your own expensive stuff by yourself. 4500 a month. Good grief. Next story. Story number three. I cheated on my wife and now she is cheating on me. So yeah, I know I messed stop. I, 32M, cheated on my wife, 29F, three years ago. We have been married for five years, and the second year of our marriage, I cheated on her in a drunken fling. She forgave me, and we went to marriage counseling. But three days ago, while my wife was in the shower, I went through her phone and found the text confirming she was cheating. I felt so betrayed, so I confronted her after she got out of the shower. She claims that it's okay because I cheated on her, and I set the precedence for allowing infidelity. I told her that my cheating was a one-time drunken thing, and that I haven't done anything since. I also told her that I don't know the girl and that she now has a relationship with this guy. I don't know. She got mad and stormed off. She left for work Friday and I haven't seen her since. I know she's with him and it hurts. I feel like I deserve this, but at the same time, I want my wife back. What do I do? Update. Okay, wow. So a small portion of you were kind and understanding and actually gave good advice, but the rest of you are so rude. So I finally managed to get a hold of her and she basically told me it's over and that she no longer loves me. I managed to track her location and find out who's the person she's cheating on me with. And Dave, if you read this, F you. I honestly can't wait to get a divorce now. Here are some relevant comments. User one said, the relationship was over the minute you cheated. But why would she stay? Why would she forgive me only to do this? Then user two said, I've done nothing but love her. Yeah, like when you cheated on her. She forgave me. I feel really bad, but also at the same time, it really wasn't my fault. It was the alcohol. She has no excuse. And finally, user three said, if she loved you, she wouldn't have left you. You get she's gone, right? Like not coming back. And also your friends or alcohol do not control your actions. The only person who does that is you. So if you want further relationships to work out and not lose another wife later on, then you need to learn one thing, how to take personal responsibility for your own actions. You cheated and now she cheated, but the big difference is she has a million options with the rest of her dating life and you don't. So maybe act like a freaking grown up about it and stop acting like you are the victim in all of this. I get that I have some blame, but after I cheated, I've been the best husband. I quit drinking for her. I don't go to parties for her. I don't deserve this though. Update number one. My 32M wife 29F hasn't come home since the day I confronted her. So I went to her HR team today with proof that she was cheating with Dave. According to some close friends who work with her, PR pulled her aside after I left. She came out crying and when Dave tried to talk to her, she pushed him away and left for the day. This brings me so much joy. 
I have to have respect for myself because that guy who cheated three years ago doesn't exist anymore. I have quit drinking, got into great shape, and haven't felt better. Obviously, the last week has been tough, but knowing hers is about to get so much worse brings a smile to my face. Also, she's going to be served sometime this week. I wish I could be there to see her face. Also, she's going to be served sometime this week. I wish I could be there to see her face. Also, it's a bonus if Dave and her break it off. Here are some more relevant comments. User 1 said, Was it really necessary to get her work involved and talk to HR when it is a personal issue outside of work? I feel like you posted this to make yourself feel better, just like how you told on her to make yourself feel powerful. I'm glad you have respect for yourself now, but unfortunately, you have no one to blame for this situation except yourself. Getting revenge on her doesn't change anything. Hopefully, you don't cheat on your next partner. Well, the revenge worked because I got her transferred to a new building. She's working the same job but in a new place without Dave. Also, yeah, I'm blaming her. If she didn't love me, why forgive me? If she didn't want to stay, why stay? She deserves all of what's coming to her. Update number two. My soon-to-be ex-wife lost her job, lost her boy toy, and lost a lot of friends. She showed up yesterday asking to talk, to which I laughed in her face and shut the door. I know a lot of you think me a monster and a terrible guy, but I don't care what you think. Her world is collapsing and all I can do is laugh. She's earned and deserves all of it. I know I cheated three years ago, but she forgave me, and I had to learn to love myself again. She had a full-blown affair for months on end, and she flat out told me she doesn't love me. I was willing to forgive at first, but now after everything, no, I can't forgive her. I have too much respect for myself. And here are some more relevant comments. One user said, You cheated on your wife and got caught. The next time, you will be better at hiding the affair. She cheated on you, and you were going to forgive her? BS. You were keeping score, and you think that you have the moral high ground even though you are also a cheater. She should have dumped you when you cheated. Nobody ever forgets being cheated on, so you both delayed the inevitable. I am not saying you can't be a better person, but thinking you are now a better person because a few years have passed? My unsolicited advice to you is spend some time single and focus on being a better person. Instead of satisfying yourself, find ways to make other people's lives better. Help people. And no, you sleeping with anyone will not make their life better. Dude, I haven't had a drop of alcohol since I cheated three years ago. Since then, I've been a completely different person. Then user 2 said, you cheated and you were the victim who had to learn to love yourself again? Okay. You said I have too much respect for myself. People who respect themselves and others don't take joy in seeing the people they love's world collapse or laugh about it. Only hateful people with no respect or regard for other people's feelings do that. I have improved very much. Why would she lose friends if she was so good? Why would she cheat if her job doesn't allow it, especially with someone in the office? Why is she losing family support? Why'd she lose Dave? I cheated, yes, but she forgave me, and I've done a complete 180 from the day I cheated, and how does she repay me for the years of change in love and support and the tens of thousands of dollars I spent on her? She has an affair that lasted months. I cheated once and already pay for it. Now it's her turn. Update number three, September 10th, 2023. So I effed up. I just got a call from my lawyer and my wife found my Reddit posts with help from who I thought was a friend. My ex-friend recorded me while I was telling him about the Reddit posts. My lawyer told me she's wanting half of everything. I don't understand how or why my friend did this, but here we are. I feel like I've been stabbed in the back twice. First for my wife, and now him. I don't know what will happen, but now I feel less confident about my divorce. I still feel like I can win though, and my lawyer said we still stand a really good chance. Edit. I called my friend and asked him why he recorded me, and he told me that he respects women and was upset at how I was treating my wife. He told me until I go to therapy again and get some help, he doesn't want to be friends with me because I'm not the same person he became friends with. I don't know what to think anymore. More relevant comments. User 1 said, How much of her getting half of everything would screw you over? Percentage-wise, how much of it should morally be yours? Like all of my stuff, and I should get like 30% of hers. Then User 2 said, wait, 
How did she stab you in the back if you cheated first? Am I missing something? I cheated once years ago and confessed immediately. She was having an affair for months. Final update potentially. So, the last few months have not gone well for me. Ever since my friend betrayed me, everything has gone downhill. I basically owe my wife half of everything. Because I got my wife fired, and because I posted everything on Reddit, the judge ruled that I had essentially ruined her reputation. So, she got the house because it's paid off, and she has nowhere else to live. My lawyer says that I should try to sue my friend for defamation, because my wife now has my posts, and has been sending my Reddit posts to all my friends and family, and basically everyone has distanced themselves themselves from me. I don't know if I would win that lawsuit because they have proof that I did post it. I don't know what to do from here, but I think I have a lot of self-reflecting to do. Oh, also a lot of you were right that my friend has started hooking up with my ex-wife, so there's that. I'll let you guys know if I want to go through with suing my friend, but as of right now, that's all I got to update you guys with. And here are some final relevant comments. User 1 said, As my mother says, you did this to yourself. Do better in the future. I don't feel like I did this to myself, though. I feel like I was the one that was wronged. I now know, though, that I need to work on myself more. But I don't know how, because I thought I already did. Then user 2 said, Remember when you laughed in her face and slammed the door when she asked to talk? Bet you're regretting that now, aren't you? I regret cheating the first time. There was no love in it, and I don't even remember who she was. I regret not divorcing sooner. I regret showing my friends my posts. I also regret going to therapy with her. Like, what a waste of time and money. And finally, user 3 said, The professional victim game is strong with this one. Why does everyone see my wife as the victim? Explain to me why it's okay for her to waste my time, money, and love on her, and it's still okay for her to have an affair. I know I cheated, but she forgave me. I'm honestly trying to understand why it gives her the right to screw me over. All right, y'all, I don't support cheating, and I, I still don't, and both people in this story are cheaters, so I'm not, like, you know, really, like, big fans of either of them, but, you know, this person cheated for this way, and this person cheated for that way, but what I'm really curious about, really, because we've never gotten a story like this before, what are your guys thoughts on this story do you see like op's behavior is justified like he said it was like a one-time drunk thing and then he battered himself and then you know she was with him for three years apparently and then she had an affair for multiple months and then you know he ruined her life but kind of just reported it to hr and then other things happen i don't know i'm really curious what you guys think about this one i'm gonna have to sit and let it simmer because i don't know what i think on this story again we've never gotten something like this before but anyway next story Story number four. I-36F found out that my husband, 38M, has a Camila, 42F. I have been married to my husband for two years now. It's a first marriage for both of us. His family has been very good to me. They immediately accepted me, welcomed me in, started including me in family events, really made it not even a second thought to say yes when he proposed after a year of us being together. I noticed on social media there are always likes from a teenage boy on posts that he puts up about me. I thought it was a bit weird that he's friends with a teenager so I looked through the photos I could see on his profile. There are a few with my husband from about 8 to 10 years ago, as well as another woman. When I asked my husband, he said that this boy is his ex-girlfriend's son. He explained that they were very serious, but that she had ended up getting married to someone else. This seemed odd to me, so I asked my mother-in-law about her the next time I saw her. My mother-in-law rolled her eyes and said, Don't even mention Val. I am so glad that you came along because that girl was so bad for him. She was unemployed, a single mother, and just very trashy. We never would have accepted her. I am very successful career-wise and well-established. My family is very prominent in the community and well-regarded. The more I thought about it, the more it really felt like my background had more to do with things than anything. I asked my husband about Val again and asked if he would have married her if not for his family. He said that one of the biggest reasons she chose someone else was because his family refused to accept her. When I asked what was different about me, he responded, She was Camila and you're Diana. I asked him if that meant he would marry her if anything happened to me. He shook his head, laughed, and said I was being ridiculous and that he didn't like that. I told him I wanted him to remove and block his ex and her son from his social media immediately and to stop communicating with them. He's told me that he has a cordial relationship with both of them and that he doesn't feel it's fair for me to ask him to cut them out. Is there a good way for me to deal with this knowledge? I'm losing sleep over the fact that I feel like a placeholder that is there to please his family and that he'll go back to her once his parents are gone. I'm starting to doubt every interaction I ever had with him. When I bring it up to him, he gets upset and tells me to stop dwelling on his past. 
I wish that I'd never known this because I feel like all of my happiness has been drained. Is there any good way to approach this? Here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, OP, how long ago did they break up? It sounds like he caved into family pressure and broke up with her, or she broke up with him. They broke up nine years ago. She dated someone else, married him, and has since divorced. From what I understand, she started seeing this other person because he wouldn't commit to her. Update, three weeks later. Thank you to everyone who responded to my previous post. A lot has gone down since I posted, and not much of it has been good to be honest. I'm starting to wish that I'd let well enough alone, but I guess I'm stuck now. So, I sat down with my husband and told him that this whole Val thing was really bothering me, that I'd never heard her name before for someone he held in such high regard. He explained that she had cheated on him and had married the guy she cheated with. They stopped speaking for a while, but they started becoming cordial again as she was having problems in her marriage and through her divorce. He swears on his life that there's only friendship there, that he can't ever forgive her, and that he has no interest in her romantically anymore. We share location history on our phones and have cameras on our house, so I know he's not lying about seeing her. My husband was my first in a lot of ways, everything except my first kiss, so I tend to be a bit more jealous than others. My husband has more of a past, and it makes me very uncomfortable, even though I know it's a reality that I have to accept. I'm also diagnosed on the autism spectrum, so I tend to be socially awkward and miss certain cues, which caused me to not really have close relationships up until him. I was over at my parents' house telling my mother about Val. She kept telling me not to worry, that everyone has a past, and that he obviously chose me. A little background, my father is a girl dad. I am the third of four girls. He's been my protector my whole life, and he will go after anyone that hurts me. Dad overheard mom and me, and came into the kitchen. Then he said, are you serious right now? He's talking to Val again? I'm going to end his life? I asked how my father knew about Val. I looked at my mother, and she was looking at him with a horrified look. He said he overheard us, and it's not right for him to talk to other other women. They tried to talk about it, but I demanded an answer and they finally relented. My mother admitted that they had arranged my marriage. We'd been seeing each other for a month and I met his parents. Shortly after, his mother called mine, explained about Val, how they were afraid he would go back to her, and how they wanted to do everything they could to make sure that their son married the right girl. I asked my mother why she agreed, and she admitted that they were afraid I was gay and that I wouldn't ever have children. She said that's why my husband was immediately invited every holiday. That's why he was introduced to multiple relatives in a very short time. That's why they referred to him as family before he proposed. They were trying to set the tone in my mind. My head was spinning. I told them I had to go and I couldn't talk to them anymore. I drove home and felt like I couldn't breathe. I walked into our house and told my husband everything. He laughed. He actually laughed. He told me that he'd figured it out a while ago and thought I had too. He told me that his parents paid for me to go on vacation with them. They made a point of getting everyone in the family to share how much they liked me. They gave him extra gift certificates to take me out to dinner and other events. His mother cleaned his apartment and did all of his laundry while he was at work so his nights and weekends were free for me. When he said he was going to save the money for a ring, they gave it to him, and they kept telling him what a good match I was for him. He asked his parents while we were engaged if it had been the plan to keep him away from Val, and his mother admitted that it had been. He told me that he fell in love with me while we were together. What he feels for me is real, and that he loves the life we have together. He said it doesn't matter how it started because what we have is strong and real. I don't know how I feel. I can't even talk to anyone because I'm apparently the only person who didn't know this happened. I feel like such an idiot. I am furious with his parents for doing this, furious with mine for going along with it, and hurt that he didn't tell me the truth once he figured it out. I don't know if I want a divorce. My husband is trying very hard to be supportive of me. I've told him I don't feel like talking. He keeps asking me if he can get me anything and asking me little questions to try to get me to talk. But I can't even get my feelings straight right now. I feel betrayed by every person who is supposed to care about me, and I have no idea what the hell to do now. Here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, Wow. Just wow. This is some Truman Show level betrayal. I am sorry, friend. If I could, I would give you the biggest hug. I need a hug. I felt like I want to throw up since I found out. Then user 2 said, This is a lot to deal with. Sorry you were having to deal with this fallout. 
I'm not from a culture where arranged marriages are a norm, so please forgive my ignorance on any protocols. One, I blame your parents most of all. Knowing this man's history and still trying to make you marry him because they thought you were gay? Even if you were gay, wouldn't that be all the more reason to not arrange a marriage? Two, is there an out clause of acceptable reasons for divorce or annulment in your culture? Would your family support you if you decided to do this? If not, are you able to be financially self-sufficient? I am also not from a culture where arranged marriages are the norm. I was the last of my siblings to get married, and up until that point, I had never seriously dated anyone. My parents are conservative, white Christian Republicans. There are few things worse that I could be to them. And my husband and I both make six figures. Money is not an issue at all. For the first time in my life, I told someone I loved him and believed I'd actually built something real with someone. Was it all a lie? Is this all some sick joke on me? Am I only as good as someone's placeholder? And finally, user three said, this sounds like a horror thriller movie to be honest. Also, why is he so prone to have a relationship with Camila's child? Is it his? The child predates their relationship. They did not know each other when he was born. How do you react to this? Like, everybody knows but you. Even if, like, the romance feels real, like, how can you not feel, like, betrayed and hurt and, like, get in your own head and be like, does this person really like me? It was arranged, so, like, maybe it happened along the way, but, like, you know, like, how can you know if it's truly love at that point? And you could go crazy thinking about that stuff. Also, if I stay single for another year, I feel like my parents would pull this on me. <laughs> But this is crazy. I don't know what to say. I've uh, we haven't read a story like this either. I've been saying that a lot lately, which I guess is a good thing. And then the uh, the husband in his relationship with his ex seems a little suspicious. I don't want to say red flag just yet, but it seems a little odd. And I can understand her placeholder complaint. But now she has to worry about you know the authenticity, the fact that she was kind of lied to or had this very crucial information hidden, like. Or, like arranged marriages are a thing in this world, but usually the people in them know about them. But ah oh, man, what do you guys think about this story? I I don't know. I'm gonna go to a wedding and crash it. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Bye bye.